G'day, Theo the Woodturner here for Record Power. Welcome to my workshop. Today I'm going to show you the accuracy and ease within which you can use the latest in Record Power chucks. It's called the SC1, I guess that stands for Scroll Chuck 1, and the Mini Pen Jaws. Really, really great. Um, there's no point in even trying to drill pen blanks on a drill press when you've got the accuracy and the ease uh, and I'll show you exactly how that's done to get the best result. Just before we get started I'll show you some of the pens that I've made. Uh, these are a couple of acrylic pens. This one I just wrapped the gold chain around the little tube that goes in the middle of the pen and this one is uh, some brass wire and this is uh, Australian Desert Camouflage. Um, this is an acrylic pen and of course here are some wooden pens. The ones I like to turn are this one here, which is the same as this one here. It's, it's called a Elegant Beauty. It's a Sierra pen and what I like about it is Firstly, that the tube is quite thin compared to the size of uh, the finished product. So you end up with a lot more wood around this tube. So it makes it a lot easier to turn. It's less likely to peel off. But if you use the right techniques, you'll get a good result every time. So, and of course, this is a standard slimline pen. And this one's made out of beef wood. So let's get started. So here are some pen blanks. This one's acrylic, of course. This one's New Guinea Rosewood. And this one is Hairy Oak. Now, what you can see with this one, the grain has been cut a, a totally different way. Uh, that's the normal way you would cut with the grain. And this one's cut across grain to make a very, very unique pen. But guess what? That's a lot harder to drill, more difficult, more challenging, because it's more likely to break. I'm going to show you today how you can get success every time, even dr drilling um, virtually into side grain. I'm using the Coronet Herald today, and I'm just going to rotate the wheel and mount the chuck. And there's a locking nut right here. It's actually a grub screw, I should say, and it helps lock the insert onto the lathe. Now, the insert is locked to the chuck with another grub screw right there, which is fantastic. There's no chance that this chuck can now come off. So our pen blank. It's pretty roughly cut and it's actually slightly bent as it shrunk or shrank. So firstly I'm going to true up the end of this blank. I'll be taking a very gentle cut with my 3 8 inch spindle gouge, the speed of the lathe, about 2,000 revolutions per minute. Let's have a look at that from the side and from overhead as well. And why don't we look at both together? There we go. A little bit more speed. We'll go to 2,500, 2,600. Just coming in absolutely square. And one more cut. Now it's ready to be drilled. This is the tail stock. First of all, I'll move the tool rest right out of the way. and the banjo and I have here a Jacobs chuck now it has a number two Morse taper and it is to go into this hole right there but before I do that you 
I must clean it. It's just imperative to have that as clean as possible. I have a taper mate. You can use a bottle brush. But this is a great tool for cleaning it right up. You shouldn't even have a speck of dust in there. Otherwise, the Morse taper will not seat properly. It's really important that the Morse taper absolutely locks in and doesn't turn once it's in. Let's now look at the tube itself. And I've got my vernier calipers here. And so we've got about 8.87 millimetres. There it is, about 0.35 of an inch. And our drill bit is just a little bit bigger, which is what we want, because we really need to leave enough room for glue. It shouldn't be an absolutely tight fit. The drill bit is mounted, and now I'll bring it up to the wood. Now, what speed do we want? Probably around about 1800 would do. And we'll just spin the lathe. I always spin the lathe 360 degrees at least before I start it. We lock the tail stock, turn it on, and start winding. Now, you start, you listen as well. Now, I'm going to stop and I'm going to withdraw. Did you see that? I released, I released the tailstock and withdrew fairly quickly. Now, I, oh, a bit hot, and that's not a good sign that it's so hot. Let's have a look. We've got some swarf here, so if we would have kept going, that swarf would have built up instead of coming out, and it could have exploded the blank. So it's a matter of having a nylon brush to keep the drill bit clean. Now this is really important. If we were to start the lathe now and bring up the, the tail stock, there's a couple of things that would happen. This would, the drill bit would catch on the end here and perhaps make that hole a little bit wider at this end. And that's not what we want. So first of all, we reduce the length of the quill. Then, I'll just clean that out. If you've got a compressor, you can use a straw. Just blow that out. We go in, lock it up, and then continue. But guess what? What I didn't do was check how deep I need to go. And that's something you need to do first up. Easy to overlook, you just keep drilling. Now some might say, well, why didn't I cut the blank to size first? Because we cut the blank a couple of mil either side longer than this, and the tube itself is 50 millimeters. Well, because when you get to the other end, as you come out, the time that you will break your blank is when you come out the other end and that's not what you want so I'm going to just put the tube down here allow a couple of mils at this end and a couple of mils here I'll go I'll drill a little deeper and that will give me some room to cut off so I'll go that deep Again, have a look at the swarf. There was a fair bit of build-up. We wouldn't have got, wanted to go much, much deeper than that. Sometimes it takes uh, three attempts to get to where you're going. You shouldn't be in a hurry. And so I can remove that drill bit now. We'll leave the Jacobs chuck in in there for a minute because I'm going to be drilling the acrylic as well. So what do we do now? I'm having a look and there is a little bit of breakage out there. 
but if I take my pencil I can place this down on here and mark the length of the tube. Then making sure that the tool rest is out of the way, I can now saw this off. I'll lock the indexer on the lathe. I'm using a Japanese full cut saw. Gently does it. And let's have a look. Yeah, it's beautiful fit there. And the same at the other end. Yes. Now that's what we want. Now let's drill the acrylic. There are some similar principles, but there is a lot more learning in drilling acrylic because it has totally different characteristics. So I have some purple acrylic here. It's quite long. I could cut it in half and that would probably make it uh, a lot easier. There'd be less flexibility, but as I was saying before, these jaws are very, very accurate both the jaws and the chuck, the SC1 chuck with the mini pen jaws. Again, we've already marked the depth. I'll remount this. And it seems to be pretty true, but I will just true that up. Just to make sure that we get a nice straight entry Brad point drill bits can be quite good to use. I'm ready to start drilling now, but not really. I'll show you what I need to do. Acrylic is very, very soft. So I have here a plastic paper tray, which I'll put under the lathe. And I have a bottle here with detergent, water and detergent. I'll just lay a towel down as well, which will protect the bed of the lathe. And I'm going to actually cool this down first and lubricate it at the same time because that's what you need to do again withdraw the quill I just brought in some additional lighting there for you and walk it up The speed of the lathe should be about 500. And you watch the swarf. If the swarf changes in any way, you need to stop drilling. And release quickly. And I think that's about it. So, I'll show you what I did. I was drilling away and then I'll just adjust this light, there we go. I released, I kept my hand on the Jacobs chuck and I withdrew very quickly. It's important to do that because if you don't, what can happen is the this swarf can melt and uh, it, it melts back onto itself on the way out because it's expanding and it, 
it can jam the drill bit in there. Now, if you look at this, you will see that you can't really even tell. Well, I can tell. Now I can tell. This is where we started. Because just at the end here, you can just see it starting to... It's got a little bit of a shiny colour where it was melting. And that's not what you want. So I stopped just at the right time. If you keep going, it will melt and you'll end up with all sorts of trouble. So, a little bit of a clean. A little bit more of a spray. Wind back the quill. Lock up the tailstock. Just check that it's going around. We'll just give you those two shots and we'll start it up again. Remember, we're only turning at 500 revolutions per minute. And I probably will get away with... No, I won't. It was starting to lock up. So you go in steady, but you withdraw quickly. And again, you can see there the difference between this and that is because the drill bit has heated up slightly. So you can go... So just that little bit more, and we would have got ourselves into trouble... Again, withdraw the quill. We've just got just a couple of mils to go. Lock the tail stock. I'll show you from the front. Hand is always on the Jacob's chuck. Just that little bit more. Stop, withdraw. And now we can saw it off. I might just leave that tray there. And again, I'll just grab that tube. I might be able to mark this. I'll mark it with the ruler. It'll be, you'll be able to see the mark better. And it'll just be a couple of mils either side. You only need about one millimeter. You just see the mark there. Just go a little bit too far forward, trying to take a long stroke. Oop, there we go. There's a, always a bit of a drama when I'm in the workshop. But, so that was great that that was able to catch that. So let's have a look at the fit. There you go. That is just absolutely beautiful. And here, yeah. If you use any type of glue that's expanding and you have the hole slightly larger at this end, the glue as it expands, like a polyurethane, will actually push the tube out. Some people put elastic bands around the outside to keep the tubes in, and that's only because they've d done a bad job, a lousy job um, in drilling. So you don't push, you don't push the drill bit into the work while the lathe is turning. You always only at the start, of course. And so that's ready now for making a pen blank. So I hope that's given you a little bit of insight into the easy way to drill pen blanks and so that you can continue your journey to finish the pen and uh, you'll have a really good bond and that's the whole aim of it. Um, just quickly, I'll show you the tube itself. I've uh, roughed it up and you do it by hand with, um, I've got about 150 grit here. You just rough it up like that so it forms a key. You don't do it with the lathe spinning and the glue will then stick between this and the acrylic. And if you get that nice adhesion all the way around, then when you're turning, it's less likely to peel off. 
I hope there was some learning in that for you and uh, I hope your journey uh, into wood turning uh, is as enjoyable as it is for me. Thanks again for Record Power for, for uh, asking me to show you what I do and how I do it and I'll see you next time.